Hey, my name is Connor and welcome to Crypto Empire where we dominate the crypto market. In this video, I'll be going over the Ethereum liquid staking derivative tokens because that is a very hot narrative in the cryptocurrency market right now and that is expected to continue up until the next Ethereum major network upgrade which is going to be happening in March of this year just a few months away. So if you want to find out what the best Ethereum liquid staking derivative tokens are, what liquid staking is, as well as a lot more relevant information in regards to this hot crypto narrative, well then you're in the right place. This is the video for you. So be sure to stick around until the very end of it. Without further ado, let's get right into the video and let the games be with you. So looking at the overall cryptocurrency market, things are still poised for a nice quarter one rally. The overall market cap right now is $899 billion, getting closer to that $1 trillion number once again. Bitcoin is trading for $17,550, but ETH trading for $1,345. And number 12 in the market cap, I'm sure you'll notice, is Lido Staked Ether, also known as STETH. And this is the liquid staking derivative of Ethereum if you actually stake through Lido, which at the current moment in time is the number one liquid staking derivative platform in regards to the total value locked rankings. This is DeFi Llama, and DeFi Llama actually just added this liquid staking category to their site, allowing us to see every single one of the liquid staking tokens and which ones have the most value locked inside of each. So it's clear that Lido is the market leader with a $5 billion lead over Coinbase. But realistically, Rocket Pool is number two. Rocket Pool completely decentralized. Obviously, Coinbase is a bit of a centralized service there. So you can stake your Ethereum through Coinbase, but it's not necessarily recommended. But before we get really deep into these actual protocols on an individual level, let's go over what Ethereum liquid staking is in general, as well as the Shanghai network upgrade, which is scheduled for March of 2023. And to do so, we're going to use our guy Victor DeFi over here. He made an amazing Twitter thread. Big shout out to Victor DeFi. And he's just explaining what the liquid staking derivative narrative is so that we all can have a better understanding of it and make smarter decisions. So let's get right into it. First thing we're going to talk about is what liquid staking actually is. So you can stake your cryptocurrency. Most networks in crypto right now are proof of stake. Of course, Bitcoin is proof of work, but Ethereum recently transitioned with the merge to fully proof of stake. And we can read here that with liquid staking, investors receive liquid staking derivatives in exchange for staking their assets. So just as I was saying, when you stake your regular Ethereum on Lido, you receive a Lido staked Ether back. It's a one to one. It's worth the exact same as regular Ethereum. You can even go ahead and trade it on the open market, right? This is on Bybit, on Uniswap, on MEXC. So this is definitely important to note. Let's go ahead and continue on. So for instance, when you deposit ETH on Lido, you'll receive STETH, which I just showed you there. So liquid staking allows stakers to get yields on their staked assets. That's the staking rewards and equally have the leverage of trading, lending and using the assets as collaterals on other protocols, right? So you can deposit your STETH on something like Aave. You can take out loans. This is an asset that has value that you can use in DeFi is the most simple way to put it. So now let's talk about the Shanghai upgrade, what it is, why you should care about it. So the Shanghai upgrade is scheduled for March and will allow users to unstake their ETH. Right now, if you stake your Ethereum to the Ethereum beacon chain, you cannot unstake it. It is locked in there and it has been this way since Ethereum first started to allow staking. So right now, users cannot withdraw their Ethereum all they can do is use the staking derivatives to trade on DeFi protocols, all right? But this ETH Shanghai upgrade is going to change everything because right now only around 14% of the overall Ethereum in circulation is deposited through staking, all right? So this 14% is expected to jump up to 50% plus once users can actually go ahead and unstake their Ethereum. So like Victor is saying here, this is just a tiny fraction considering the size of the Ethereum network. The Ethereum Shanghai will not only enable ETH withdrawal, but also accelerate growth of some liquid staking providers. Right, we went ahead and showed you these here on DeFi Llama as well as CoinGecko. And we will be covering this in some more detail. Be sure to stick with me until the end of the video. So now he goes over the key players and what they are. So let's get right into that here. So Lido, Rocket Pool, StakeWise, StakeHound, 
Anchor, Frax, Stator. These are all different liquid staking protocols and they all essentially allow you to do the same thing if you stake your ETH through them. For example, if we look at the Lido website, this is stake.lido.fi. Very simple to stake your ETH. All you do is connect your wallet, you put in the amount of ETH you wanna stake, you hit stake, and then all you do is you get ST ETH back, right? It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Small transaction cost of $2.31. You stake your Ethereum, you get your liquid staking derivative back, you can go use that in DeFi, happy days. Now with the Shanghai upgrade, it's gonna allow you to basically just unstake your, your Ethereum and get your regular Ethereum back without having to sell your ST ETH or do what you need to do with it on DeFi. So this is big, but really the main point of this video is to firstly inform you what liquid staking derivatives tokens are, why they're useful, but now let's go over some speculation in regards to these asset prices because as we know in crypto, narratives are key. And this narrative has already taken off since the start of the new year. But I would not be surprised to see it continue up until the time of the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade. Very similar to how Ethereum this past summer in 2022 was rallying before the Ethereum merge. And then at the time of the merge, it actually ended up being the top of that rally. And it's been nothing but down from then since then. I would not be surprised to see a similar type of thing play out with these liquid staking derivative tokens up until March of this year. So we still have around six weeks of potential upside, not financial advice. Let's go over these charts and look at what we're working with. So LDO Lido, the number one liquid staking derivative token has already gone parabolic. If we look at this from the start of the new year, we can see December 31st on January 1st, it actually went ahead and printed its first green candle bullish breakout and to the high it went 171 percent to current price it is up 84 percent on the year also notice how i have put an orange parabola here on the chart so this has gone parabolic we want to watch for this parabola break with this chart it is very interesting because it did just make a higher high and it closed the daily candle above this previous high going back to november of 2022 this is big, all right? Bear structure was broken. This is now bullish. It is officially in an uptrend with this higher high. So as long as this parabola does not break, I would not be surprised at all to see it go ahead and test these highs over here at $3.10 and potentially break those as well and continue its path upwards. Because when things really get going, they don't tend to stop. I could see this thing potentially topping out at the time of the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade as I just previously stated. So right now LDO is pulling back. This is previous resistance. We wanna see this level hold as support here at $1.75, $1.80. If it loses the parabola, I wouldn't be surprised to see it come all the way back down and test some of these levels at around $1.30, $1.25, as you can see, previously base support down here. But the way things look right now, the way the market's looking, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing continue to charge up higher. We do have some order blocks here, some demand zones on the daily time frames. Look for a pullback to these levels, but no guarantee you get it if you are interested in getting into these. All right, but LDO is the number one, and a popular thing in the crypto market is to go after the smaller coins after the main one has already pumped, right? So that's basically a rotation play, right? If you already missed the LDO pump, a lot of people would, would consider going into the smaller ones and in the past, that certainly works very well, but do not forget right now, we are still in a heavy risk off environment. Yes, the market is bullish here in the short term. I think we're gonna get a period of risk on here, like I said, for the next six to eight weeks, potentially of bullish price action, but we're still in the midst of crypto winter. Liquidity is very low overall in the cryptocurrency market. So with the rotational plays, just be a little bit careful because the capital may not rotate the way that you want it to and it could just stay flat right these smaller lsd liquid staking derivative tokens they could potentially just stay flat and you don't get the gains that you're looking for because the main one just continues to suck up all of the liquidity and ldo without a doubt right now is the main liquid staking token here with a five billion dollar lead over number two which is coinbase and rocket pool which is the actual number two because Coinbase is a centralized entity, it has a $6 billion lead over that. So if you're gonna bid on any one of these tokens, Lido is 
the one to go with, not financial advice. Watch for this parabola to go ahead and continue. Now moving on, we have RPL as the number two rocket pool and works the same exact way that Lido does. You stake your Ethereum in rocket pool, you get R ETH back, rocket pool ETH, and it's liquid. You can go do whatever you want with it, use it in DeFi, etc. So RPL right now trading for $25.41, also in a bit of a parabola, right, with the bottom over here after the FTX collapse on November 10th, it was at $13. So it has gone 100% from that bottom back in November of 2022, 91% from current price. Now, please note on this chart, it did just flip its daily, weekly major resistance level. Right, as we can see, we went ahead and closed above it with yesterday's candle, and we are holding it. So, one can expect this trend to continue higher, especially with the narrative in play. Realistically speaking, the all time high on Rocket Pool, if we look at it, is $59. I wouldn't be surprised to see an all time high test with this narrative over the next few months. Of course, that's not financial advice. If you do plan on buying any of these tokens, the second it breaks the parabola, you want to get out. All right, same thing with Lido. The second this thing breaks the parabola, do not get caught holding it because more times than not, when the parabola breaks, it's game over and the fun, the party stops. All right, an example of that would be with Axie Infinity. If we look at Axie over here, just kind of zoom this out. We go back to the last bull market. Axie went parabolic twice, right? It first went parabolic at the start of 2021. And then we had the cool off period in the summer of 2021. Out of that bottom, this was when Bitcoin was trading for around $30,000, did not really break 30K. Axie came all the way back down to $3. And then from there, it went to its high of $164. But what I was talking about is the parabolas here that I have on the chart. Notice the second that price broke the parabola here on Axie, it did have a little bit more upside, right? But what it did was it back tested the parabola breakdown multiple times, okay? And also this is bearish divergence. I can pull up the RSI, it's probably there, but I'm not going to. All we need to know here is that when it breaks the parabola, the party is usually over shortly after. It may have a little bit more upside, but the bulk of the move is finished. And we're not here to try to be heroes and catch the entire trend, right? Because this thing went 1400% before breaking the parabola. Once it broke, it only went up another 160%. Of course, if you bought down here, that extra 160% is huge, but you cannot complain about a 1400% gain and safely taking profits on it. And then over here, after that summertime correction in 2021, actually went parabolic again from that bottom to the parabola break, it went up another 1400%. It broke that parabola, it was printing a a triangle as you can see over here it had some more upside right it came all the way up to $49 and then it went to $164 so another 2x there and of course if you were buying it down here from three to five dollars this move from 50 to 160 is huge it would definitely multiply your profits but still you don't know because when that parabola breaks more times than not that's your signal to to look to exit but nonetheless these rules apply to the current narrative right now. Back with Axie, it was play to earn gaming in the last bull market. Now it's liquid staking derivative tokens. So when these parabolas break, that is your cue to definitely at least realize some profits or just exit the position altogether. Now moving on, number three over here after StakeWise. But with StakeWise, as we can see, you can only really go ahead and purchase this one on Ethereum, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's only on Uniswap. Anyway, with FXS, Frax. Frax is a very solid DeFi token, right? Stablecoin, really, really knowledgeable founder that really understands DeFi. So Frax, I think, is a good token for the long term. And if we look at this chart here, it is forming this massive uh, triangle. And the breakout spot would be up here at around $6.40 from current price. So you can certainly look to front run this breakout by getting in now. That's up to you, not financial advice. But out of this breakout, if we look at potential targets, we can put some FIB extension levels on the chart here. And we have our 0.27 at $9.38. And we have our 0.618 at $10. That's almost a 100% gain to current price. 
And then we do have this wick over here. Realistically, I can see this wick getting tested at 13. All right, so from current price to $13, there is a potential gain here of from current price 140%. It's there. I can see this happening with this narrative continuing to play out up until the Shanghai upgrade. And of course, Anchor suffered a, a hack over here back in December, caused a big splurge down to 1.5 cents, now trading at 1.9 cents. But it has recovered, as we can see over here on January 8th, printed a very strong candle. Volume starting to come back into this. So Anchor has not pumped like these other ones have. Right from the bottom, it has gone only 25% to current price. So if you're looking for one that has not pumped yet, Anchor definitely one of them. But like I was just saying before, be careful about the rotational play because we're in a bear market still. Liquidity is low. We might just see the main ones, specifically LDO, just take off and leave the rest of them in the dust. So if you're sniping for that lower market cap liquid staking derivative token that did not take off yet, all I'm saying is to be careful and definitely exercise proper risk management so that you're not stuck holding a bag that never took off. Meanwhile, LDO just continues to rip higher. But anyways, Anchor here definitely has some potential upside. If I go ahead and extend this trend line over here to the right, price trying to break it, you can wait for a confirmed breakout of this trend line. It does go all the way back here to November of 2021, which was the peak of the bull market when Anchor was trading for 21 cents. Even if you do get a gain back up to some of these main levels over here, right, such as the rally that happened in August, that was during the Ethereum merge, back up to four or five cents, you're looking at over a 100% gain there potentially with this narrative. Now, QIQ is another one that hasn't really pumped yet. If we look at this, this has a market cap of only $24 million. So quite a low market cap, definitely some high risk there. The other ones that I showed you all had at least $160 million in market cap. QI is really starting to get into the low caps now. But if we look at this thing, it has not pumped yet. And one great metric to see if we're going to pump is some EMAs on the chart, which are some basic ones, the 21 and the 9 on the daily. And here, the green one is the 9 EMA. And to signal a bullish move, we want to see that 9 green EMA cross over the gold 21. And QI right now on this daily candle has that bullish crossover. If we look at this, it has a long wick down, which happened over here during the May crash when Luna first collapsed and that was the start of the crypto contagion. So even just to that level, there is a gain here of 15%. I can certainly see it flipping the level here. All right, doing something like this and then just starting to take off higher. Some potential upside here on QI, but definitely be careful as it is a lower market cap play. And like I said, we don't know if these smaller caps are gonna pump as well or only the main ones. Anyway, QI, looks good for a pump is not pumped yet bullish cross on the daily just happening right now if you're going to go into any small caps not financial advice but qi does look the most promising for a move based off of this current narrative and some of these other smaller ones fis has already pumped here if i clean up this chart slightly and take a measurement this thing is already gone 69 percent can potentially keep on pumping higher. Market cap of FIS right now is $22.8 million. Another low market cap. If you look at Stater, right, $8.7 million market cap up 175% on the week. This one took off, can potentially continue to take off. But I really just wanted to go over what liquid staking derivative tokens are, what it does, why you should care about it, and the main coins to focus on when trying to trade this narrative. I hope this all made sense. I hope you were able to pick some things up here and add it to your own arsenal and knowledge base. So in this video, we went over Ethereum liquid staking derivatives. We covered the main tokens for this narrative, what liquid staking is, why you should care about it, as well as much more. If you enjoyed this video and found it valuable, make sure you let me know by smashing that like down below. And if you are brand new to Crypto Empire and you are not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead right now and smash that subscribe button down below and turn on all the notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And my name is Connor from Crypto Empire, and I will see you in the next video.